welcome to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Beaker System, or actually we're probably going to call this Mr. Beacon, because no one can pronounce Hitchhiker's Guide to the Beaker System, Mr. Beacon's quicker. We're at the Bluetooth SIG conference, and a uh, um, lot of Beacon stuff going on, very interesting, and I am with uh, Jakob, the CEO of Estimo, and we're really excited because uh, you guys are just doing some very cool things. First of all, thanks for talking with us. Absolutely, a pleasure. Yeah, I'd love to get some demos of some of the cool new things. You're doing ultra wide band, you're doing Miro with HDMI, and uh, then I'd like to just pick your brains about where the Beaker system's going and get your commentary, because it's always interesting. Absolutely, so, so today uh, here at Bluetooth World, we're showing uh, the new version of location beacons. So the beacons have been updated with the ultra wide band radio. So in addition to the Bluetooth 5 um, chip, they have new radio, and the radio um, will allow us for the beacons to talk to each other and then measure the distance, precise distance between each other. So let me show you some cool demo here. So uh, as you can see here on, on the floor, we have four beacons. I just you know, put them randomly as a, as a square. Yeah. So I have a little demo app. The app is now through the mesh network enabling the UWB radio. So as you can see, beacons are blinking. Mm -hmm. So now they are uh, measuring, there's several, uh, several times sending information back and forth. And as a result, very quickly, you have a dimension of the figure or, or the map they've been, they, they created. So you see the dimensions, you see the shape. So let me kind of play a little bit. Okay. So if I, if I turn it into a rectangle and okay. I do it again. So as you can see, the, the, map, the app is now recalculating. And as a result, I'm gonna see a new floor plan for this setup. So as you can okay, see, it's, it's a, rectangle. a rectangle. So ultra wide band is normally associated with very high precision location. So why not just use ultra wide band? Why still stick with the Bluetooth? That, that is correct. So ultra wide band, because of a little bit, a little bit wider radio uh, radio span, it is it is possible to achieve time of flight technology measurements. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it can be as precise as one inch, one, two centimeters precision between the nodes. The only challenge is that the ultra wide band still is a little bit more challenging from the power consumption perspective. So for our beacons, we use ultra wide band as an initial setup. So when you have, let's say 50 or 100 beacons and you would like to map a space, so you basically put the beacons on the wall, through the mesh network, you enable the ultra wide band. It's going to measure very quickly within a minute the distance, and then the ultra wide band radio will be shut off. And of course, the location uh, will continue to use on top of the Bluetooth signals, which is you know way more efficient from the power consumption perspective. So why of is course, it if you, it's you know, kind of cool? But what's the problem that you're solving with that? Well, it's a, it's a fundamental problem of time to deploy beacons at scale. So if you're a chain of, if you're a cha store chain, like having uh, hundreds of stores or thousands of stores, and you would like to at scale deploy hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of beacons, well, you need a method that can be done through software. You know, in the past, this was people um, working with a map and putting the beacons in the precise you know, uh, locations and measuring the distance and taking some floor plans from architects. Well, it, it is too much hassle, it costs too much, it takes too long. So this technology is a pure software solution. You put the beacons, the map will be created automatically and you can build your proximity or location um, applications on top of it. So it's a fundamental problem for deploying or beaconifying physical world. Yeah, I think deployment is just a real key dependency on these us accelerating what's going on. So I think you're, what you're doing is important. And, and we were talking before this, I have a client who, uh, who basically uh, bought dedicated ultra wideband kit to do this ground truth. And now having it built in, I, I can see you're really gonna save a lot of time and just make it easier and you don't have to have specialist people doing it that was super easy to do absolutely absolutely we, we believe that the physical world is going to be this kind of new canvas for future developers and designers so you know in the past we used to design for like piece of glass here and like pixels and mouse cursor you know we believe that this is going to be the new canvas and there, there should be an easy way to, 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 to develop these apps and, and, and put together an application infrastructure so very excited so 
It's a new product, a new revision. Uh, we're going to ship next month. Are so you? if you go to estimate.com, you can order. And um, I'm very excited to be here and show it to you. Yeah. Let's look at another demo. Let's look at Mirror. Should we? Uh, I'll help you. I'll, I'll grab these yeah. beacons so we don't want because they're pretty cool. Don't sure. want people uh, running off with them. And uh, let's go and uh, walk around the show floor and That's see Mirror. Yeah. Okay. But what are you looking for? Uh, a bunch of so another cool product we're also showing today. It's called. Estimode Mirror. Yeah. It's a it's a first in the world video beacon. So as you can see, it has both HDMI and USB, and you just connect it to any display and TV. So we could just go back and probably uh, we'll see one. Yeah. So it, basically, it is going to be yeah, uh, it's going to be attached okay. like like that in the in the back of the panel. And what it does, it turns the display into an active, smart, intelligent display that is sensing the Bluetooth signals. Yeah. So whenever the display is uh, listening to the application signals or signals coming from other beacons, it can react. So I can show you some demo. So here in the shoes, we have stickers. It's another product. It's a tiny, tiny beacon. Okay. So if I if I upside, if I make the shoes upside down, you can see the screen is reacting. If I if I take another shoe. It is responding. Love it. So basically, this is a tiny computer, you know, attached to a screen that is now fully responding to actions that user took in front of the screen. So whether you have an app and the app is sending the signals with your content, could be your name, could be your your, your flight number, could be you know any content you wish, or it also can take signals from from beacons and respond to your movement, your actions. So we're very excited. We are just you know moving the contextual computing you know technology to the next level. It's not only the screen to push your notifications and to engage with you. Now it's the, it's the wall, it's the digital wall, yeah. it's the display, it's the projector. And that is so important because we've always been limited by getting someone to download an app or, or kind of getting to grips with the browser, with the physical web. Now you don't, basically everyone can interact with beacons because it's in the product display. Yeah. And also so here, we, your we have... addressable audience is 100% of the people in the venue rather than the 5% that have got the app. Absolutely, and there is also no question that beacons will get into ordinary objects as soon, you know, as, soon as, 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 as possible. So we have already customers integrating you know beacons during the manufacturing process into the furniture, toys, um, other devices. So there is no question that in the future all the objects in the store, in the retail store, there will be beaconified. You will be able to engage either through display, either through phone. The data will be collected so the store manager can access, you know, how many people try the shoes today, you know, what what how many impressions. So you know it's exciting that this physical world is getting digital and you have full control as developers and designers you can build amazing you know, magical experiences. Very cool. And and so you're gonna be presumably you'll be integrating with the CMSs that control digital displays yeah. and Yeah, so yeah. you know at Estimode we know we, we, we believe that it is not possible to design like one CMS for all the kind of application in the physical world. So yeah. we're already working with a number of companies building CMSs for museums, for airports, for retail stores. So as a company, we expose APIs. So, th so those partners, they, they see all the beacons, all the data, all the analytics data, all the permissions, and, and they just make it part of their applications and part of their system. So we're a very developer-focused company. We have SDKs for Android, for iOS, and, and RESTful APIs for other platforms. So and that's the kind of philosophy behind it. Wonderful. Work. And last time, so I think you were like the third uh, CEO that we interviewed on the <laughs> show, so thanks for helping us get started. And I asked you a question which I think kind of stumped you, which was what are the three tracks that you would take to Mars? Because you're like super visual, and we can see that with this just amazing are, design. Exactly. So I'm going to ask you, what are the three pictures or paintings that well, you would take? I, I, I'm, I'm going to actually focus on one. So as you know, okay. our research and development center is, is in Europe. It's it's in Krakow. It's a very old, you know, kind of Renaissance architecture city in the, in the central of Europe. And believe me or not, but in Krakow we have 
Leonardo's Da Vinci's pa one, paintings, one of the one of his you know uh, masterpieces. It's called a Lady with a with an Airman. I don't know if you're familiar. I think oh. Mona Lisa is much more famous. Yeah, it is. But this is also an, a nice nice painting. All right. So it's authentic okay. Leonardo's Da Vinci, and it's you can only find it in in Krakow in the museum. So okay. I think I will take this one just to remind me the Central Europe and the amazing it. culture is there. So. <laughs> Thanks, Hope to Jacob. get to Mars someday. Jacob, uh, CEO of uh, Estimote, thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, doing some great work.